my um, hearts and everything. And um, Skelly is here. Everybody is here to greet you. Now, I love to do basics. And as Jennifer's already said, I have been doing um, ICU, cardiovascular, SICU, trauma, and ventricular assist devices and transplants for about 37 years total now. So that do not add that up and ask how old I am because that's inappropriate. <laughs> so I love to do everything that is basic because I like to know that people know what the basics is so that we can build on it. And so I like really easy and super complicated as you can tell because I like devices. So um, introduce yourself on chat. Let me know if you're where you are, what you're thinking about in this EKG land, what um, types of things brought you here. So that's always kind of fun. And because it looks like we are one minute prior to um, our start time, I want to go ahead and get my share screen up. Um, yep, there it is. So you can see where we're going to go. <clears throat> so ask all the questions in chat. And um, so it looks like I can see the chat, Jennifer. I cannot answer in chat except for host and panelists for some reason, but I'll answer out loud. So if I see questions and I've got them up here, I can answer the questions out loud. So we've got a nurse practitioner um, and we'll finish in March. Yay, we love all the new stuff that's coming out. So ask all the questions about how this works and Jennifer will tell you a little bit more about the EKG aspect of this class. So right on time, we are starting. Hey, KJ. Hey, Missy. All right. So <clears throat> let us get started. I always like to kind of get started with a patient scenario. That's kind of my thoughts. And um, just so I don't trigger you, I won't let the siren run too terribly long. But we have a 53-year-old male that is coming in and he has had chest pain for a couple hours. But now he's, his pain is kind of eased off a little bit. So what do you want to ask? I've got a little EKG up there for you. So we're going to end up, I want you to be able to look at a 12 lead. I want you to be able to look at the 12 lead. And where do your eyes go? So that's where a lot of times we see this 12 lead or we see monitor strips going on in the, e, in the ER or you see an EKG in your um, 12 lead in your clinic. Where do your eyes go first? Do you just kind of wander across and hope something will slap you in the face? What, what is our thought process on this 12 lead? So I want to say, where should you spend your time? If something is saying a STEMI accusation, you want to go to that area first. But if it's subtle stuff, how do you get into here? What, what do you look at on this EKG? So that's kind of what I wanted to start with. First of all, we want to say, what did the patient what is the patient's scenario? What did they come in with? What are their vital signs? What are they bringing to the table? And then now what other information do you have? Our information here we have is this 12 lead and we would have more labs once we get into the ER, but right now this is all we have. And that's, he says that he had chest pain, but it's gone away. So we're gonna look at the CKG and say, where do I wanna spend my time on the CKG? So I like, as everybody who's known me for a while, likes to use the camera analogy along with my heart. So I have heart on a stick, as we like to call him, heart on a stick. And I like to say, if you look at a camera and I have a 3D object that's got all kinds of sides to it, it's got a lateral wall to it, it's got an anterior wall, because we want to use kind of the fancy words anterior, not front. We've got a posterior wall of this heart and We've got an inferior wall of this heart. And when we say lateral, we're always talking and referring to that left lateral wall. We actually have a high lateral wall, which is up here at the top of that lateral wall, that left lateral wall. And we have a low lateral wall. But I want to take this camera. I want to take this camera and I'm going to take snapshots of that heart. I'm going to take a couple pictures on this lateral wall. Now, when I'm up here on this lateral wall, I'm not just going to take one picture. I'm going to angle the camera and take two pictures, just as if I wanted to take a picture of my face and I want to get a good one because we don't want to get wrinkles. So I would look and say, oh, let me take an angle like this. Oh, that's OK, but let me get an angle like this. I think I look a little bit better. So I'm going to take both of those angles, the same area that camera was in the same area. I just angled it a little bit different. So when we talk about these leads, when we talk about these leads, we are saying, I'm going to put the camera here. I'm going to take a snapshot, but I'm still in the same place. 
I want to take another snapshot of that same place. Those two leads, just as where I am right now, is lead one. This is lead one. I'm on the left lateral wall, lead one. And I'm going to come down here and take another picture in AVL. I'm still on the left side of the body. I'm taking a picture of the left wall of the heart or the lateral wall of the heart. And as you look at this, we're actually going to be able to see that we're going to be taking a picture of our coronary arteries, one of our coronary arteries. And we're going to get there in just a second. But as that camera goes around the heart, I'm going to take a picture down here on the bottom of the heart in my inferior wall. Same thing. I'm going to get three pictures of the inferior wall. I'm going to go lead two. I'm going to angle it to lead three. And I'm going to angle it again for AVF. I've got three pictures in that same area of the heart. And if I want pictures of the front of the heart, if I want pictures of the front of the heart, I've got six options. I've got V1 through V6. I've got all these options I can look at. And each one of those options are going to tell me something about that coronary artery that is right there in front of it. So that's the first thing I want you to look at. So when you're looking at basic, I want you to look first at that basic aspect of where are you looking? If the patient is having a coronary artery and somebody has told you that they're having a left anterior descending artery, because that's what we're going to do now are the coronary arteries. If they've had a left anterior descending, I would put the camera in front of the left anterior descending. How easy is that? I wouldn't put it, I would look down here at the inferior wall, but I would center all my thought process up here in the front of the wall while it's taking that picture. So now let's look at the heart, the heart itself and say, what are the arteries that's perfusing this heart? We have two major arteries. Thank goodness it's semi-easy, right? Two major arteries, a one on the left, and that left coronary artery is going to come down. It's going to bifurcate into the the coronary artery that goes around the heart, it's going to circle around that wall of the heart. And on some patients, it's actually going to actually going to perfuse the posterior aspect of the heart. So we call that coronary artery that is circling around the back of the heart, or excuse me, circling around the side of the heart, the circumflex. So it starts here on the left, circles around, circles around that lateral wall, gives good blood perfusion to that lateral wall. And then some patients, also it will perfuse the back of the wall. So let's go back to the front. So that left anterior descending, not only does it bifurcate and go over to the left, but it's going to come down the front of the heart. It's going to come down the front of the heart. So we're going to call it the left anterior for front and descending. Thank goodness they made something in anatomy easier than the normal words that we try to use. <laughs> so that left anterior descending, it's gonna take care of the septal area. It's gonna take care of the anterior wall, all the stuff. So if I wanna look at my anterior wall and my septal wall, I'm gonna look at that camera angle that's right here in the front of the heart in those precordial leads. Okay, so let's keep going. My right coronary artery, my right coronary artery is going to perfuse the what do you think? What side of the heart? It's going to perfuse the right side of the heart. And I'm watching all your answers here. I'm watching all your answers. Y'all are typing so fast. It's so much better than me. I type horrible on when um, I'm on the computer. So I can never keep up with as fast as everybody else is typing. So that right coronary artery is going to perfuse the right side of the heart. It's going to perfuse the right atrium. Now watch this, not only is it going to perfuse a portion of the heart, but it's also going to perfuse some of the electrical aspect of the heart, which we're going to do next, but it's going to perfuse my right side of the heart. It's going to perfuse my sinus node in about 60% of the people, 60, 65% of the people in the, then it's going to go down and perfuse my AV node. So my sinus node, my AV node. Let me actually put my sinus node and my AV node up here so we can visualize that. Even hard on the stick has a little sinus node and an AV node. So it's going to perfuse that sinus node, that AV node, and then it's going to come down here and perfuse the right ventricle. If anybody knows me, 
I am super crazy about the right ventricle because nobody pays attention to the right side of the heart. They're just like, no, no big deal. The left side's the important one. No, the right side pushes all the blood to the pulmonary system. We have to have that. So right coronary artery, we're going to look at the sinus node, the AV node, this right ventricle and right atrium. Sorry. So we're going to get all of that. So if, let's just give you something here. If I told you that this patient's having something coming in with a right coronary artery issue, and I already told you that the sinus node and the AV node both could have an issue because that's part of the perfusion, we know right there, we have to start watching for what? What kind of things, if that's all the information you have and you're very basic to EKGs, and I told you that my sinus node and my AV node are um, perfused by the right coronary, and I gave you the information that the right coronary could be the one that's having a clot in it or could be having some ischemia, yes, blocks, bradycardia, yes, you've got it, perfect. That is Victoria and Alisa, oh, Allison, Allison, and KJ, yes, 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 perfect. So also the right coronary artery, before we forget, also in the majority of your patients perfuses the back of the heart. So we've got two coronary arteries right now that we already know that are that can be the ones that are perfused in the back of the heart, either the right coronary or that little circumflex over there on the left side. Okay, so I know I'm talking fast. I'm wa watching my time because I want to make sure I get everything in because I always have too much stuff I want to say. So let me know if I'm saying that too fast. I'm hoping I'm not. So one more little thing to um to look at when you're talking about basics is you want to know, you want to know why are all these waveforms going up and some of them are going down. I always wondered why do I have up up size waveforms and I have some waveforms that are going down or negative or inverted. So if the electricity in the body, this is normal electricity in the body. And I like to have a little arrow. I always use my little arrows. So you see that on my slide and you see that here in person. So when I'm saying that the electricity in the native heart, this is my native heart here, the electricity in the native heart starts up here on the <clears throat> right side of the body in that sinus node. Then it goes to the AV node. Then it goes to the bundles. Literally, it goes to the left bundle first, goes to the left bundle first. It shimmies across the septum over to the right bundle, puts its electricity on the right bundle, and then it goes and it perfuses the rest of the ventricles of the um, of the heart. So right side of the body to the AV node over to the left bundle, shimmies across to the septum, and then it goes back and it perfuses the rest of the bundles. When it does that, when the electricity is going this way in the body, you see I'm going from the right-hand side of my body over to the left. Whenever the electricity is going like that and I have an electrode on my patient, if I have an electrode on my patient that that electricity is coming toward, if that electricity is coming toward that electrode that is physically on my patient, and I go over this in a lot slower detail in the 30-day, this is just getting you started here. When that electricity goes like that, I see electricity as a positive waveform on paper. So because the electricity is coming toward that positive electrode, I will see positive P waves. I will see positive R waves. That's the positive part of the, elect the electricity in the QRS. And then I will also see positive T waves. If we don't see that, if we don't see that, then that means the electricity is not coming that way or there's something wrong in that ventricle and the electricity is going a different direction because the patient maybe has some axis deviation. They've got a muscle that's too big. That's how we assess what's going on. But in normal electricity, the electricity is coming this way. And if that electrode is over on this left-hand side of the body, then I'm going to have positive waveforms on paper. So anything that's negative, we know that the electricity went the other direction. So technically when it's crossing that septal wall, it's going the other direction. So my electricity didn't go that way. It went back the other way and I'm gonna see negative, I'm gonna see negative waveforms or inverted waveforms. Now we have two leads that that shows up all the time. And those are my absolutely favorite leads. 
key point, because we may have a little quickie one question game here in just a minute. Quickie, remember that we have two leads that those are inverted waveforms in AVR. In AVR, all my waveforms are negative because the electricity goes, excuse me, the electrode is up here on the right hand shoulder. So instead of the electricity going toward me, I'm going away from me. So all my waveforms in AVR are inverted. All my waveforms in AVR are inverted. And KJ's already typed in the second one. And so has Tanya. Perfect. So V1, V1 has little baby R's. It has a biphasic P waves. <clears throat> and in the class, I explained to you why those um, P waves are biphasic. Little baby R's in V1. So I look at those two leads first. When I'm going through my assessment of the 12 lead, I look at AVR and I say, are you negative AVR? You're supposed to be negative. I look at V1 and I'm going to be, and I say, V1, is your P waves biphasic? Do you have a baby R? You need to have a baby R, not a big one, and not no R. You don't want no R, that's bad. And I want to have inverted T waves. So in this um, example, I have inverted P's, I have a biphasic P. I tend to um, look at them ahead um, together. I'm looking to see if there's ST elevation. I want to see that I have a baby R here. I want to see that my T wave is inverted in V1 and it matches up with that one in AVR. So right there, I've already put two things together on this EKG when I'm looking at it. Now we're going to start lumping those um, leads together. So now the thing that we can do is we can lump these leads together. We don't have to know 12 leads. We don't have to know 12 leads. We just have to know what leads we are doing super quick. We can look at my lateral wall. I've already introduced that. In my lateral wall, this wall over here on the left-hand side of the body, I can say, let me put that positive electrode up here on the left-hand side of my body. My lead's gonna be up there. I'm gonna take a picture in lead one. I'm gonna angle down toward the heart itself. And I'm gonna get a picture in AVL. Both of those EKG leads are looking at lateral wall. Also, as KJ has already typed in, so is V5 and V6. So I'm going to look at this whole lateral wall here. All of those leads are perfused. Excuse me, that whole lateral wall is perfused, we said, by that circumflex artery. So we have to look at those four leads. I like to call them sisters because I like, oh, you're twin sisters, but you're not identical. You're fraternal twins. In lead one, what do you say? Lead one tells me, well, I see upright P waves and upright R waves and upright T waves. That's what I'm supposed to see in lead one. Uh, and then I asked my sister in lead ABL, do you see the same thing? Yes, I see the same thing. Maybe a little bit different angle because again, I'm angling it, but I see the same aspect because every bit of that electricity that we talked about is coming toward that positive electrode that we have over here. And again, I say this a lot slower in the class. <laughs> so you don't have to learn all of this in less than 20 minutes. So that's what our normal aspect is in that lateral wall. So if that's the case, you see down here, everybody's upright in lead one and ABL, that lateral wall. Oh no, there's a question. There is a question. You know, I like to play games. And so I did a quickie one, I did an easy one. I didn't want to be super hard. <coughs> Excuse me. What are the two main arteries in the heart? What are the two main coronary arteries? I could have made this a lot harder, but Alisa says, yes, the left and the right. Perfect. That's what you have to know is that there is a left main artery and a right coronary artery. Now in the class, I give you a lot more information about that because I want you to know some other things about those coronary arteries and some other things that you have to watch for and and how you would treat your patient. So what other things could you do? What else are you looking for in that patient, either in the ER, the um, EMS, the clinic, ICU? Of course, I, I love the ICU, so I'm always gonna be picking up on that one first. So let's go back to, let's go down to that inferior wall real quick. And in the inferior wall, I get a couple different leads. My coronary, my, um, my camera first goes on in that inferior wall to the 
lead two. Then I come over here and I look at lead three. So in the inferior wall, I'm actually getting a snapshot. So my 12, my um, electrode will be down here on that left lower aspect of the body in lead two and three and AVF. It'll be on that left lower aspect of the body. So the camera's looking like this in lead two up to my right shoulder. In lead three, it angles over to my left shoulder. And in AVF, it goes straight up and down at a 90 degree angle. So this is what we would call axis. You don't have to worry about axis. I'm telling you it's the angle of the camera, the angle of the camera. That's what you're looking at. Now you could look at other things during that time period if that waveform is not all the way up. But I told you that in those leads, that EKG electrode is over here. So the electricity is going toward that inferior wall electrode. So in 2, 3, and AVF, in 2, 3, and AVF, I should also be looking at my um, electricity should be positive. My P wave should be positive. My Q, the majority of my QRS should be positive and my T wave needs to be positive. So everybody's up and happy in AVR, um, in AVF, in the lead two and lead three for that inferior wall. And we talked about the coronary artery at the beginning that perfuses that inferior wall and it's that right coronary artery. So y'all are so smart. You're already typing in all the answers. Let me, oops, hold a second. Erase that. Okay. All right. So on those precordial leads now, super quick. Again, I will give more specifics when I had another um, two seconds that Jennifer would give me to talk because she knows I will talk forever if, I, if I'm given it. But I usually use Skelly to make sure that we know exactly where the V leads need to be placed because because if those precordial leads are not in the right place and they're a little bit off, and I told you that if we're looking at something with a camera, if we're looking at something with a camera and that camera is not at the right spot, let's just say I want to look at my nose. Let's just say I wanna look at my nose, but I put the camera up here. I'm not getting a really good angle of my nose. It looks like I may need some surgery or something with that picture. I would need to make sure that I had that camera in the right place. So these V leads, important, important, important. These V leads need to be in the right spot. If they are not in the right spot, I can't tell you what you're taking a picture of. You need to put the camera in the right spot. So we go over that very specifically. Again, I use Skelly for that just to make sure we know where the electrodes need to be so that they are taking the pictures of the right, the right part of the body. So V1 and V2 are gonna be taking a picture of that septal area of the body right here, that little septal area. There's a bunch of little arteries that come off of the um, LAD and those are little septal branches and they need to be looked at in V1 and V2. We look at very specific things on that R wave to say, huh, what's my septum doing? And I say, well, let me tell you what my septum's doing. I can tell you in V1 and V2 what it's doing. But the LAD, the anterior aspect of the heart, this little part right here is key in leads V3 and V4, that's our anterior wall. The problem with anterior wall MIs, septal anterior wall MIs, these patients, these patients that go into, that have a heart attack with an anterior wall MI and then go to develop cardiogenic shock, their mortality rate is still very, very high. And when we started doing ventricular assist devices back in the early 2000s, when we, um, when I was on the FDA trials for them, we were um, trying to decrease a lot of the mortality on these anterior wall MIs. At that time, anterior wall mortality with cardiogenic shock was over 90%. So we're running now in the 50s. So we're, yay, we're getting there. <laughs> but still, it's very, very high on those patients. So what you have here is just a cute little picture that I've made that we've talked about all those coronary arteries. We've talked about the coronary arteries on the front of the heart. We've talked about the ones that take care of the lateral wall of the heart, that circumflex. We've talked about the ones that take care of the right-hand side of the body. And, um, and we've got that inferior aspect of the body. So we got all of them. So we've put them all together. We lump them together. We gather them together in these, what we call contiguous leads. 
I still like to call them sisters <laughs> because it's easier for me to remember. But when we want to learn and say things correctly, we want to say those are contiguous leads. If I was talking to my neighbors and my friends, I'm like, yeah, those are my sister leads. So I put lead one and AVL together. Those are my sisters. They're looking at that lateral wall. I put V5 and V6. I'm looking at the low lateral wall. I put leads two, three and AVF down here at the bottom. And they are looking at my inferior wall. And then all those V leads are going over here to the um, anterior septal area. And then there's always AVR, which is my favorite. And we have so much research that we teach you about with AVR. So many things that you can look at AVR with and find out what it does. Oh no, there is another question. There is another question. So I told you that this question would come back to um, uh, for you to remember what two leads have T waves that are normally inverted. And this is key. Yes, KJ. Oh my gosh, you're so so fast. I can't see. Um, Celia, Cilius, Angela, AVR, Angela, Dix, Dinkska. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm sorry. Amy. Um, yeah, y'all are fast typers. Better than me. <laughs> so AVR, AVR, <laughs> which is my favorite lead. Absolutely my favorite lead and V1. I always look at them first and compare and contrast them so that I can see what is going on with that right outflow, tr outflow track. And my last little thing that we go over and Jennifer does this, I kind of put it into a little visual just super quick so you can see it, is when we're looking at these patients, we tell them how sick are they? How fast is your heart rate? Is it regular? Are the intervals right? And Jennifer will go over that a little bit more later too. What is your axis? <coughs> Excuse me. What is the ST segment segments? Are you having elevated ST segments or are they depressed? And where are those segments? Is there any hypertrophy? And what are the T waves? And you already know two of the T waves that have to be inverted because you already answered that questions. And why would you get Q waves and are they good or not? Q waves are when my electricity is not going the way that it's supposed to. It's going back this way. That's a Q wave. It's going away from that positive electrode. When things don't come toward the positive electrode and they go away, they make negative stuff, negative Q waves. And those are not always good. We can have some little tiny ones, but we can't have them all the time. Okay. And then we bring it all together and we say, how sick is your patient? Oh, Jennifer, I did that. And I have four minutes left. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, Michelle, as usual, the heart voices are just spot on. Um, <laughs> it looks like Alyssa had a question. Oh, yes, yes. When looking at the posterior wall leads, is that also the RCA? So yes. Oh, you caught that even in my talking oh, so, fast. so fast. <laughs> okay. So yes. So there literally, we don't know which one of those coronary arteries is dominant in your patient. So either the circumflex could be the dominant one and it's a lesser pro um, percentage of patients. It's usually more toward the um, 40, 50% amount of the patients are left dominant, dominant. So they would be circumflex perfusers to the back or that right coronary artery is the one that's perfusing the back. And that's the majority of our patients are right dominant, right coronary dominant. Then there's a very, very small percentage. I think it's like five to 6% of the patients, they are co-dominant and either one or the other is the back of the heart and perfuses it. So we don't know which ones they are. It does not have to do if you're right-handed or left-handed. I've already thought that out and it wasn't. <laughs> and of course you did. Michelle knows all the things. Oh, Amy loves your necklace. <laughs> oh, thank you. I have two. Yes. I have my EKG one on and my little baby heart. But pretty awesome. So guys, just a little heads up. Uh, we're going to transition over to arrhythmias in just a few, but this this was uh, Michelle Barkley, who, um, yes, the perfect explanation and the cutest heart, Tuna says. Um, so <laughs> seriously, Michelle, you rock it. Um, she's actually one of our lead coaches in our 30-day EKG challenge that we do. Um, all the things that you're going to see today are basically little bite sizes of what we do in the 30-day. It's kind of like taking a slice out of the 30 day and putting it all into one, one afternoon, which is why we wanted to give you a little smattering appetizer plate of things to choose from. So I'll be doing arrhythmias next. 
And then Matt Holden, who is our advanced EKG coach, he is from Scope Education. He will be coming on right after me to do a little advanced section. But I want to assure all the students that are here that even though we're going to jump into advanced after me, I don't want you to be intimidated. I just want you to take what you can from whatever Matt teaches, because he's very um, good like Michelle, where they keep things very easy to understand. But don't feel like if you're not getting everything that, you know, you're not in the right place because you are. We're super glad you're here and we're going to kick it off. Yes, everybody's saying thank you, Michelle. Um, let me pull up my slides. We're going to do this in, we're going to do some slides and then we're going to do some visual arrhythmias. So let me get our slides up and I'm going to actually uh, start from the beginning, but I do need to really quickly stop our recording and then restart. So let me do that. Um, Michelle, it looks like Missy is having a hard time finding us. Are you able to help her really quick? Let me stop. <laughs> 